want to start and tell you why I'm here and why I care so much. I moved to Toronto from Windsor, Ontario about 18 years ago. In many ways, Windsor is a great place to grow up, um, but for a queer youth at the time, I would argue it was not the best environment for me. Uh, I grew up in a religious family, church every Sunday. Uh, we were all part of the church. I was an altar boy until high school. It sounds lovely and wholesome, um, but here's the thing. It was torture. Um, before I continue, I, I have nothing against organized religion. In fact, I think it's, it's a really beautiful thing for a lot of people. Um, and really builds a, a loving sense of community. I also think uh, that like most things, times change and people change for the better. But for me at the time, um, it was not a happy experience, to say the least. My mere existence um, was a sin and I knew I was going to hell. Um, it's really sad when you think about it, because as a little boy, I truly thought that I was kind of going to suffer in some kind of eternal damnation. I knew I was gay at the age of eight years old. I did not understand what that meant. Um, but the first time I, I heard that kind of that F word dropped, which happened, you know, virtually every day at home or school, I inherently understood at that time that they were talking about me. I carried so much shame. Um, I had absolutely no one to talk to for a decade. Um, I hid from everyone and everything. Um, and sadly, in the process, I really grew to hate myself. Um, I grew increasingly homophobic. I thought I was disgusting. Um, and honestly, I, I also thought I was going to die young. Um, based on everything I was learning, and this is roughly in 1990, 1991, I assumed that I was going to die of AIDS. This isolation really crept into every area of my life. Um, I was too scared to play sports because I held that belief that gay people can't play sports. Um, so that kind of became my reality, you know. Uh, I, I could not get caught. So I wouldn't do anything, and I mean anything, that would possibly out me. I remember at recess, um, I would show my face outside and I would kind of walk around the yard um, so people would see me, so I didn't think I was, you know, weird. But then I would kind of sneak back inside and go hang out in the library. And this is actually the, the, the birthplace of who I am today. In that library, I found the internet. This was quite literally like a, a magical escape to me. And it was magic at the time. It really was. Um, I learned, I became quite technical. Um, I learned how to manipulate the firewall at the time um, to go beyond the learning materials that they present you in school. And I found the wider internet. Uh, I remember one time when no one was looking, I typed gay Canada. I don't know why I remember that, but I typed gay Canada into Yahoo or Excite or one of those websites that are the Google of now. Um, anyways, I found Toronto. I found my escape plan. Um, the internet changed my life. It showed me that there was something worth living for, um, that being gay might actually be okay, or at the very least tolerated just a few hours north of where I was. I found, uh, I found community. I found my community. And for the first time in my life, and I was still quite young, um, but I had a goal. You know, I had a plan. I learned everything you could possibly learn about networking, computers, programming, hacking, web design, literally anything I could absorb. Um, in real life, I was still quite lonely. Um, I got a job at the age of 14. I actually got hired at the age of 13, but they made me wait until my 14th birthday. And this was really step one. Um, I had to buy my own computer. My parents didn't have a lot of money. Um, and I, was, I just couldn't keep sneaking around public libraries and school libraries across the city. Um, but fast forward a few years and I was eventually forced out of the closet. I fell in love with my straight best friend and as a defense mechanism, he told the entire school and outed me to everyone, including my family. Um, this led to a series of unfortunate events, getting kicked out of the house, getting into trouble at school. Um, but eventually I found a close group of gay friends. Sadly, during that time, uh, I lost one of them to suicide. Another friend a little while later um, was uh, murdered for being gay. 
Needless to say, um, all of this supported that narrative that I built up for myself that being gay is, is dangerous. It's dangerous business. I packed my bags and I left. I moved to Toronto. I had no job, no future in mind, um, hardly any friends, but anything was better than where I was at that point in my life. Given my experience in IT uh, and networking, which is really built as a foundation because I was gay, it was my escape, I found my way to Beanfield. Beanfield, oof, Beanfield was gay owned and operated, and I immediately found my forever home. Um, I became very close friends, best friends with our CEO, Dan Armstrong. He was out and proud. And at this point, I was still kind of, even though I was out, I was never out at work and I was still hiding. Um, believe it or not, I am actually marrying my partner um, in September who works at Beanfield. Though we did meet prior to him uh, being at Beanfield, we built our relationship at Beanfield. And that's because this was the only place on the planet that I felt safe, that I felt I could be. 100% authentically me. I held, uh, I held a number of roles over the past uh, 16 or 17 years at Beanfield. Funny enough, this is all quite fitting because today marks my work anniversary. So this is, this is, kind, of, this is kind of funny. Um, but in my current role, as VP of People and Culture, I've created several groups to ensure that anyone like me that lands at Beanfield finds a place here, finds a place in our community. Um, I started our social committee. Um, I created our ERGs, our employee resource groups. Um, with many others, I, I helped organize our Pride events for almost a decade, including our, our Pride parties, and we've even done floats in, in Pride Toronto. Um, I brought in a third party diversity consultant and together we built our vision and built a diversity, entire diversity program and policy at Beanfield. In HR now, we're looking at our hiring practices. Um, we're ensuring the language and systems that we use are inclusive and equitable. Um, as a gay owned and operated company, pride is kind of like our, our Christmas, I would say. Um, we celebrate Pride every year. We, we sponsor the Black and White Gala from the CGLCC, which is the Canadian Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we, of course, donate to various charities. I think most recently was the 519 in Toronto and West Island LGBT uh, QS2 Plus Centre in Montreal. We highlight community organizations. Um, and, of course, for the second year in a row, we're supporting the LGBT Q2S Plus Voices in IT produced by IT World Canada. I want to wrap this up um, by saying the tech industry has become such a great industry for queer people. This kind of um, digital human-centered design has allowed people like me to tell our stories. I've always found there's a lot, there's natural empathy um, and a desire to learn more about each other as a result of this technology. It's led to a, an interest in intersectionality and really uh, an appreciation for open and free communication. By being a white cisgendered male, I have a ton of privilege um, that was handed to, might, have been, might as well have been handed to me on a silver platter. So I do recognize that my experience is not the same um, for me as it is for many others, which is really unfortunate. Um, but that's kind of, that's why I've dedicated my career to doing what I do at Beanfield. Um, using this platform that I have for change. We have a lot of work to do, um, but I'm optimistic that events such as this one are making a huge difference. Thank you.